final tip for today is build your confidence. I have sat with chiefs, deputy chiefs, captains, lieutenants, um, sergeants, analysts, dispatchers, uh, records management staff, accreditation managers, line officers. I've sat with them all, with them all, doctors, doctors even, heads of doctors, right? I've sat with them all. And the number one thing that many folks lack is confidence. They are not sure that they are doing a good job. They are not sure that they are of, of value. Why don't people like me? All these questions come into their minds, right? And so in our community, we focus a lot on building your confidence, um, not this egocentric kind of way, but truly knowing your skills and talents, what you bring to the table so that you can feel confident and secure in the decisions that you're making and why you're making them. So you're not alone. If you struggle with boundaries and confidence, you're not alone, right? We see officers and managers in crisis because they're not really um, confidence, essentially, right? And so we don't want to wait until you get into crisis. We want to build your confidence, long-term sustainable confidence in life by design, right from, from wherever you are today. So you're not alone, okay? And so there are a couple, we're going to talk about three ways to build your confidence today. Really looking at your skills and talents, developing your personal strengths and finding strengths in others. Now, our community, um, Excellence in Analytics, we, we go through, we, we have lots of tools around this. We're just talking about a couple today to get you started. Uh, but wherever you are, whether you're in human trafficking, whether you're in, um, you know, on the good side of human trafficking, <laughs> whether you're a federal agent, whether you're, you know, a chief of police, um, an analyst, and anyone in between, these are three key things that you can do to really improve your confidence. This will help with your home life, with your husbands, with your wives. Um, hopefully you have one, <laughs> I'll be one husband or one wife. Um, this will help with your children. This will help your family with your relationships with your family and friends. And most of all, with your relationship with yourself. All right. So building your skills and talents, developing your strengths and finding strengths in others. So building your skills and talents, really, what is the thing that lights you up, right? What is the thing that gives you energy, that inspires you? It's not too late to decide this. What gives you joy? What makes you come alive? These are questions you want to ask yourself. So in our, in our Excellence in Analytics community, we work a lot with, you know, knowing who you are, knowing your contributions. This is a fun discovery area for so many of the folks that we work with because they may not know what brings them joy anymore. They may be so burnt out that they don't even know that joy can exist, right? So we work a lot with folks to help them find what makes them come alive. So what unique skills do you have to bring to the table? What's unique about you? There is something unique and special about you. You matter. What you bring to the table matters, okay? And so, you know, if you're thinking, mm, I don't matter anymore, if you're so overwhelmed and you're not understanding your value, I'm here to tell you, you matter, all right? So let's identify the unique skills that you bring to the table. This might take some coaching. This might take some, you know, um, working one-on-one -on -one with somebody, and that's okay. Um, you know, you can do that. You know, our, our, our group, you know, brings you to that level. But for, for some of you, these questions might be just enough for you. So I, I encourage you to think about what unique tables bring, do you bring to the table? What unique talents, rather, do you bring to the table? Developing your strengths. This is the second level of building your confidence. You know, Really be proactive about developing your strengths. Design a professional development roadmap. And if you've never done that before, if you've never done, developed a progression plan for yourself, I encourage you to work with somebody to do that. Because often I see people just taking random, you know, cell phone analysis, um, you know, this training or that training. And there's really not this this streamlined effort, even for chiefs, even for, you know, lieutenants or captains, I see them take a week-long leadership course. There's not really like this progression plan, right? I encourage you to get solid on your progression plan, which involves the skills that you want to develop, not the training name, 
but the skills that you want to develop. And that could be skills in your personal life too, how to communicate more effectively, how to be influential in your, um, in your leadership, right? So the key things you want to build in your professional development roadmap, make sure that they're proactive. How can you learn every single day? That is something that we promote is, you know, podcasts and growth opportunities every single day. Every single morning, um, you know, I have my cup of tea, I learn something new every day, and then I apply it to my day, right? And then I get my workout in, and I'm off and in, in having a great day, right? Leadership development. Don't wait until you're a chief. Don't wait until you're a deputy chief. Don't wait until you're a captain in order to learn leadership. Even if you never want to step into leadership, right, an actual leadership role, you still want to build the core leadership characteristics so that you can be a leader of your life, okay? Develop your strengths by talking with mentors on a regular basis, talking, hiring a coach or talking with someone that you admire on a regular basis to hear their perspective. There's this great book called Think and Grow Rich. And of course, uh, you know, some great authors out there, Dale Carnegie, um, you know, Napoleon Hill, of course, and some, some really wonderful, um, John Maxwell, some great leaders that are always thinking um, at a higher level. And so getting yourself connected. And of course, our group, Excellence in Analytics, we, we have a leadership program where we connect everybody, all these leaders to be thinking at high levels on a regular basis, which is wonderful. Proximity principle, strengthening your, your uh, or developing your strengths rather means that you are connected in proximity to other people who know more than you do, right? And so they can rise you and you may know more than them in other areas so you can rise them. So getting connected is a great way to build your strengths. And finally, rising others. When you make an effort to rise others, a real effort to rise others, right, in their own leadership, you're creating a culture of growth in, regardless of what your title is, and you are actually rising yourself too, right? I take every opportunity to rise the people around me because there are great things in the people who surround you, right? And when you take that opportunity of gratitude and of rising other people, when you make that a habit, you'll see that the people around you own their roles. They rise into leadership themselves, and so do you. So create opportunities of acknowledgement as often as you can. Share successes with others. Take every opportunity, whether you're in Comstat or at a, you know, some kind of meeting relative to, you know, supporting your infrastructure, right, your operations, or maybe it doesn't even have to meet, be a meeting, but whatever you do, share successes with others, look for the successes in others and highlight them. You know, I've done this with my daughter, my 10 year old, where, you know, I'll, I'll say to her, hey, you know, I really admired the other day when we had some company over and, um, and, and they, you know, got up to take the dishes to the table, to the sink. And you're like, oh no, no, sit down. And you grabbed it for them. You were a great hostess. You made them feel comfortable. You made them feel, um, you know, invited, right? Like a, a good feeling. And, and you were so responsible. Thank you for just rising in our home and creating that happiness. And she was like, I did. I, I did that? I guess you did. And guess what? The next day she wants to do it again. All right. Rise other people. Offer your support wherever you can. If you see a gap, offer your support that helps rise other people and tell them, get on the phone with people, get in front of people, let them know that what they're doing is of value and you can rise them. Tell them, communicate it to them every opportunity you get. So communicate their successes to other people and communicate it to them every opportunity you get. So, you know, here's this thing, life by design. You know, we walked through a bunch of different areas of life that you get to design. It's your life. You get to decide the life that you want to live. I'm going to repeat that. You get to decide the life that you live. So if you're deciding right now that life is just this way and this is the way my life is and things are not good because of this, that, and the other thing, you know, life is not good for you right now because you decided it would not be good. But if you decide excellence, 
you will achieve excellence. It all starts, things happen twice. They happen first in our minds and second in reality. So the first move you need to make is to decide that you're going to have an excellent life. I'll say to my daughter, our day is going to be a great day. You know why? And she says, because we decided. When you make a decision to have excellence in your life, you know, it happens in your mind and that'll create inspired action to go then get it, to engineer it back 